if that hourly or 15 minute time frame draw on liquidity amounts, you think that the market's going to go higher or lower to that specific liquidity. The only thing you're waiting for, if you're bearish, and I'll give you the example for being bearish, on the five minute or one minute, there has to be some short term high traded above. Even in a run while the market's been going down, don't think model 2022. That, that, that's not what this is. Okay. It's, it's not that. It can, he can take a trade with that model within that context of, of the market reversing. We don't need that. The market can be going down for the entirety of the day. If it hasn't traded to that 15 minute or hourly sell side liquidity pool, it's not done. His model says aim in that direction. If it's 50 handles to get to that low, doesn't matter. He's not holding for them 50 handles. He's trying to get 10. He's not always operating in 10 o'clock till 11 o'clock. He'll, he'll trade when he sees that that liquidity is presently a draw. And if he wants to be in front of the charts, 30 seconds allows him to take that 10, uh, not 10, pivot, 10 handle run. 10, uh, 30 second chart is doing 10 handles all over the place inside of one hour. But you don't need to have your take profit or your draw on liquidity reach to for the, the model to work. You need to have an understanding of where the market is likely to reach to. You have to frame a 15 minute or a 60 minute draw on liquidity where the market's likely to go. And then on a one minute or five minute chart, if you're bearish, there has to be some run above a five minute swing high, even while it's been going down, it has to go up above it and start trading lower again. And then once it does that, you can drop down into a 30 second chart, take a, a 30 second fair value gap because the damage has been done on the five minute chart. It could have been a stop run on a swing high in a one minute chart. See, that's what a high frequency trading algorithm is doing. Every single one of them has to have a disruption in order flow before they will institute a new order. That means they cannot go short until it goes up. It has to go up. Why do you think I taught you discount premium? Enigma is fucking talking to you. The market has to go up, purge some measure of liquidity. If the market does, I don't give a fuck what market it is, but if you're bearish and on a five minute or one minute chart, if a swing high, a short term swing high on that five or one minute chart, is taken out by one tick and it trades lower. As soon as it trades lower, on well, what time frame are you talking about? Whatever time frame that liquidity was taken on. If you see the swing high on the five minute chart has been pierced by one tick is all it takes. It doesn't need to close above it. It doesn't need to have a certain measure of handles above it. One tick. Once it does that, that's a disruption. That's a disruption in order flow. That's it. That starts the sell program. Then on a lower time frame, it can be a five second chart. It could be a one second chart. It doesn't matter, but I gave him a 30 second chart because it's easy to get in there and take a fair value gap after that disruption in order flow, knowing that the market will gravitate towards that liquidity. We need not see it trade to it. It's there every day, every hour, every 15 fucking minutes, it's there. So forget the 90 second or 90 minute, it's every 15 minutes, it's there. I literally could sit there all day long, trade just intraday volatility, just doing what I just told you. Now, Intraday volatility, that means you're going to be looking for an hourly or basically a 60 minute swing high or a swing low that is likely to move to. It's in close proximity to it. It's been going up for the last couple hours or so, and it's just getting real close to an obvious 60 minute high. If it's not doing that, go down to a 15 minute time frame. Look for a swing high that it might be gravitating to. If it's gravitating towards that 15 minute high and real important, here's the main filter. Here's the filter folks on a one or five minute chart there. If you're bullish, it must show a swing low taken and then reject and go higher. Whatever time frame, whether it be the one minute or five minute, whatever time frame that swing low is breached, it goes below it. It only needs to go by one tick. Doesn't need to close below it either. This needs to go below it. That time frame that has the swing low, it must have a candle close up after it takes that low. Once it does that, you immediately drop down to a 30 second chart. Instead of a 30 second, use the one minute and use the 15 minute and one hour chart. Everything's scalable, but you have to have whatever that time frame is the one minute or the five minute, there has to be a stop run. One of the first primary principles I taught when I stepped out on baby pips is the real move will not happen. The dynamic price runs where there's magnitude and, and delivery and speed that will happen after a pool of liquidity is engaged. That means if the market's bullish, if you think it's going to go higher, I think it's going to draw up to some level, whether it be a high, a relative equal high, uh, inefficiency above market price, whatever that is up there that you're framing as a reason for it to want to go up, it's far more likely to get up there with conviction and speed if 
there has been a short-term run on liquidity that's below the marketplace in the form of stops or sell-side liquidity because the market's going to go down to allow traders to buy those stops. What traders? Smart money. The algorithm is cowtailing to them. It's, a, it's, a hand, it's called handshaking. The market reprices to levels to allow handshaking to occur. That's the real term. That's exactly what's going on. And when those orders are being provided to the participants that are on the sideline, you're not seeing their fucking orders on the DOM, the depth of market. Smart Money's orders are not sitting there. Their orders are immediately piped in, immediately. If they have their orders the size of their fucking orders and the volume of their fucking orders, if they were sitting out there where you could see them, you could really read sentiment then. They're never going to fucking let you do that. When it drops down to take the sell side when you're bullish, whatever that time frame is that has the swing load that it pierces and goes below, as soon as it does that, you have to wait for one candle to be up close. Once it does that, then and only then do you drop down to the 30-second chart and you wait for a fair value gap to form and then you buy. The best one is the first, but you can take continuous buys on a 30-second every time it creates a fair value gap or um, trades to a down close candle. You treat it like a bullish order block. Over time, if you submit the three months of doing it, you build discipline and you aim for that liquidity. 